But of course, life's not about money. Life's not about money. Life's about flourishing and happiness and success as an individual. It's not about how much money I die with. Right? Jeff Bezos won that. But it's not a competition. It's about making the most of the life you have. And sometimes, for some people, it's about money. For some people, it's not. It's about pursuing what your values are, what your passions are. So, if we leave people free, they make different stuff. The outcome is going to be different. They're going to have different wealth after a very short period of time. Because, metaphysically, not a social construct, but metaphysically, we are different. With the, again, with different genes, different parents, different environments, and different choices that each one of us makes that is going to result in different outcomes. Anytime somebody wants to, in a sense, overturn something that's already metaphysical, it's part of nature, it's part of reality, something is screwy. So what's the only way we can take the differences among us and make them somehow equal? By force. Yeah, by force. The only way to do that is by force. And even then we can't really do it. We can just approximate it. Okay. So yeah, some of us create a lot of value and some of us create a little value. What can we do in order to create things? We can take from those who created value and give to those who didn't create value. Now, how is that just? How is that moral? How is that right to use force against those who created to give to those who didn't create? Where is the morality in that? Where is the justice in that idea? But that's exactly what those who would tell us that inequality is a problem, it's exactly what those who want to solve the problem of inequality want to do. And of course, why stop at money? Right? We're unequal in lots of different things. How do we equate out inequality in any respect? Relationships. What's that? Relationships. Relationships. How does that work? Uh, all for a socialist to try and equal the 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 or a man for every worker, it depends, right? On your orientation. Um, and that was very sexist because you assumed that men work and women don't. So you're, you're in trouble now. <laughs> you're in trouble now. You didn't talk anybody about anybody in between. No. I mean, there are many dimensions in which we're different. There are many dimensions in which we're unequal. And the only way to try to remedy that is by use of force. There's no other way to do it. And if you accept that force is bad in some dimension or another, then the striving towards equality cannot be a good thing if it requires physical force. And it does. There's just no other way to make us equal. And indeed, even with force, you can't make us equal. Some of us are smarter than others. <coughs> some of us they're more ambitious than others. Some of us, we all have different interests. How do you make us equal? You can't. And that's the point. Metaphysically, we're just not. And you can't overcome those metaphysical bar barriers. So the whole idea of trying to establish equality is, in my book, an evil idea. Indeed, it's probably the most evil idea one can imagine. There's only one there's only one sense in which equality means anything. <coughs> when, when, uh, when the Founding Fathers of the Declaration of Independence in America write that all men are created equal, what do they mean? Because we're not. We're, e we're not equal. No rights. What's that? No rights. Yeah, we're equal in our rights. We're equal in our liberty. We're equal in our freedoms. We're each born with the right to our own life to our own liberty and our own, the pursuit of our own happiness. 
We are born free. We are born with the right to live our lives as we see fit, free of coercion, free of coercion from our neighbors, free of coercion from our government. We are born with these rights. We're born equal before the law, if you want, if the law is properly understood as defending, protecting our rights. In that sense, we are equal, or should be equal. And that's something you can actually control by structuring the right kind of government and understanding of individual rights. But notice that any attempt to establish equality of outcome, any kind of outcome, necessitates violating the idea of equality of rights. Because any attempt to establish equality of outcome means taking the pie that you baked by force from you and giving it to somebody who didn't bake it. Which is a violation of your rights to your own property, to the, own, to, to the product of your own labor, to your own life. So there is a trade-off, a direct trade-off, between the striving towards equality of outcome, which is impossible to get to, but the striving towards equality of outcome, and freedom and liberty. If you value liberty and freedom, if you value individual rights, if you value your right to live your life as you see fit, you cannot value equality of outcome. And of course, if you value equality of outcome, you do not value the rights of an individual to live free. Now, in, a tr in, in that kind of setup between equality and freedom, I'm on the side of freedom, I don't know about you guys, uh, and not on the side of equality. Now, that's true, even if you don't believe in absolute equality, even if we just want a little bit more equality, it requires violating somebody's rights. Even if you want so-called equality of opportunity, what is equality of opportunity? Not discriminating? No, equality of opportunity is not not about discriminating because it's because the fact is that we all have different opportunities. It's very much an outcome, right? Think about it. What, what do they complain about equality of opportunity, for example? Uh, a poor kid is born with parents who don't have a lot of money and therefore might not send it to as good as school and therefore might not, they might not have a computer at home, they might not have books at home or whatever it is. And, you know, my kid was born in a relatively wealthy family and had a computer at home and books at home and parents who loved him and da-da-da-da-da, so he had more opportunities than that, of course, right? How, do, how, how are you going to equate the opportunities if we were going to equate opportunities? By explaining the outcomes of one person. Well, again, yeah, it's another form of outcome. The only way is to equate some way of outcome. In other words, to take from some to give to the others. So again, even the idea of equality of opportunity as understood by most people, requires the violation of rights and requires the violation of some people's freedom. I think it's more about the average. People want that the average poor child will have as much as a, of a chance to the average rich. But he's not going to. There's no way to do that unless you take from the rich and give to the poor. So it necessitates the same kind of action, right? Is that morally acceptable? Well, I mean, that's a good question, but is it ever acceptable to use force in order to fulfill your or anybody's social ambitions, right, or social ideas? The fact is, there were, again, the fact is, they were all unequal. We're born into unequal circumstances. We're born with different genes. We're born, and now you want to penalize somebody who's born in a good situation for the sake of somebody who's born in a bad situation. Is that morally right? I work very, very hard, a lot of hours, to give a huge amount of opportunities to my kids. And now you want to tell me, no, your kids have too many opportunities, we're going to penalize them, we're not going to allow them into schools, we're going to take some of their opportunities away because somebody else, for whatever reason, right, didn't have those opportunities. How is that right? The alternative is that the poor will remain poor. No. Why would the poor remain poor? Because they lack opportunity. But, but they don't lack opportunities, they just don't have equal opportunities. There's a big difference between lacking opportunities and not having equal opportunities. They have a smaller set of opportunities. But that doesn't mean that they can rise up. Indeed, in economies, in countries, in the world, 
where we don't redistribute, where we don't take from some and give to others, where we don't try to establish equality, what happens to poor people if they're ambitious? They rise up for poverty. 